In this episode, OpenAI is preparing to release a new AI model that promises to be a transition to general artificial intelligence. The company also revived its own robotics department, got bogged down in scandals, and made a deal worth gazillions. Also in this episode, we talk about the Pentagon's AI, Chinese drones, and sensational statements by key AI developers. Let's get it! Humanoid general purpose robots from 1x Technologies backed by OpenAI are indeed getting smarter. In previous videos, Eves autonomously performed a variety of tasks. It looked impressive, but they were specific and the robots didn't have to switch back and forth between them. Now, engineers have taught the robots to listen to voice commands and combine individual tasks into longer sequences of actions. As the robot report found out, the company is working on a unified neural network for a wide range of tasks but it will create it on the basis of individual modules which are created by training robots through teleoperation and voice. The developers are currently creating a library of skills in which each action is displayed in the form of simple language descriptions. As a result, to start the robot's operation or correct an error in its actions, it's enough to give a voice command by, surprise surprise, speaking. This greatly simplifies the interaction with the robot, whether it's one or several. At the same time, 1X already has a common navigation and handling policy, and in the future, the robots should learn actions such as opening doors, crates, and bottles. The engineers are really excited about the last one, but as of yet, they say it's still too early for that. The downside of this approach is that it's necessary to teach robots every skill without exception. This greatly hinders the development of universal brains for robots. We'll tell you all about pros and cons of this approach and whether there are alternatives in our next video, so hit that bell and subscribe to get in on the latest action. Meanwhile, OpenAI, contrary to Sam Altman's recent statements, is still working on GPT-5, the AI model that will replace GPT-4. Before that, Sam announced the model, then stated that it wasn't needed at all and they should just stick to GPT-4.0, the company's latest model. Now it seems the company's made up its mind on how to approach this topic. In their blog post, OpenAI said that the new model will get, quote, next level capabilities, which is on the way to creating a strong artificial intelligence, otherwise known as AGI, that can match the capabilities of the human brain. This model will extend the functionality of chatbots, digital assistants, search engines, image generators, and other AI-based applications. Training this model is already underway and is expected to become available this winter. Although, there's a few sour grapes. A scandal broke out around the company after it announced the creation of a committee on security and protection from potential threats of general artificial intelligence. The catch is that the committee is headed by Altman himself, who has been accused by former employees, including those on the board of directors, of creating, quote, a toxic culture of lies at OpenAI, claiming that all of his decisions are driven by one thing and one thing only, profit at any cost. In theory, the committee will oversee the development of a new large language model that will eclipse all previous ones, but not just to oversee, also to conduct research into AI ethics, child protection, ensuring non-interference in elections, and assessing the impact on society. However, many believe that such self-control looks almost like a farce against the backdrop of the once non-profit organization's quest for super profits. Not to mention the restructuring of the super alignment team, which up until a month ago was headed by none other than OpenAI co-founder Ilya Sutskever. On the other hand, the company is successfully moving towards its goal if money is the aim. Apple and OpenAI have signed an agreement recently to include advanced generative AI technology in Apple's software. The deal could bring OpenAI billions of dollars since everybody knows that Apple is sitting pretty on a Mount Everest of cash. But for Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella, it brings an unnecessary headache. Nadella is reportedly very concerned about how the agreement with Apple will affect OpenAI's relationship with Microsoft. We'll keep you posted on this one, so stick around! Incidentally though, OpenAI, which has invested in the likes of 1X and Figure, has decided to relaunch its own robotics division. In fact, the company used to try to build robots before, 
But this direction was closed in 2021, even before OpenAI gained worldwide fame and, more importantly, shekels. By the way, this year the company won the RBR50 award for innovation in large language models, as well as application programming interfaces, or simply APIs, that allowed robotics developers to demonstrate the interaction between physical robots and generative artificial intelligence. Now it has become known that OpenAI is again recruiting employees to its robotics team. However, it will apparently not develop its own robots. What gives? The new department will focus on improving and implementing the multimodal AI models developed by the company into physical robots of OpenAI's client companies. Engineers will also develop new AI-based applications for clients, which in theory should create more revenue streams for the company. Amidst all the hype, one of the world's leading AI experts, Jan LeCun, urged young developers not to get hung up on large language models. In LeCun's opinion, LLMs are not capable of logical thinking, do not understand the physical world, and will not reach human intelligence. Therefore, they have already exhausted their potential and it's better to focus on creating the next generation of AI. This sparked a heated discussion. Some fervently supported Lacoon, others on the contrary saw this as Lacoon's attempt to reduce competition since he himself is a party to the issue at hand. Seeing all this, the scientist elaborated. He believes that companies are already densely engaged in the study of large language models. They have the power, experience, and means, so it will be extremely difficult for novice researchers to offer anything new in the field. That's why he suggests they focus on systems that will overcome the limitations of LLMs and become the next generation of AI. Users on X immediately began speculating about what exactly Lacoon meant by such systems. They agreed on several options, multimodal AI, general AI capable of reasoning, embodied AI, i.e. brains for robots, self-learning without supervision, and more. What do you think? If you had to bet, say, a strawberry Pop-Tart, which AI system would you bet on? On to China now, the 8th Drone World Congress and 9th International UAV Expo 2024 just wrapped up a few days ago in Shenzhen. And as always, we got our eyes on the prize. Jiangsu Digital Eagle Technology showcased military equipment at the exhibition, which surprisingly was underrepresented given the scope of such events. Digital Eagle presented an off-road vehicle, a ground robot, and a multi-rotor drone with a suspension in the form of an automatic rifle. In general, the company specializes more on drones for agriculture, but it seems that it doesn't want to miss out on this niche either. ZC Aviation brought its vertical takeoff and landing UAV, the ZC-300, which was tested by the military during an exercise in China a couple of years ago. Then it was used to deliver cargo and medical supplies, which the drone, flying at an altitude of about 650 feet or 200 meters above sea level, simply dropped into the designated area without landing. Now, we didn't count, but it's reported that a whopping 500 drone and other aircraft manufacturing companies were at the exhibition this year. There are a lot of cargo drones, drones for agriculture, and other industries. For example, DJI brought its Flycard 30 model, which can deliver cargo weighing up to 65 pounds or 30 kilos at distances of up to 10 miles or 16 kilometers. The main purpose of the drone is to deliver large parcels and orders within city limits. DJI was not alone though, since there were a lot of devices like this presented at the expo. But there was only one company that got to woo the audience with a flying saucer. Chinese startup Shenzhen UFO Technology beat Apple to it and presented the iUFO. The manned device is designed to carry one adult and get as high as 650 feet or 200 meters off the ground and fly at 30 miles or 50 kilometers per hour for about 15 minutes. The main purpose of iUFO is to use it as a tourist attraction for sightseeing. Unfortunately, we couldn't verify if alien costumes are going to be included in the package, but we'll keep you updated. And the Pentagon plans to have a comprehensive military artificial intelligence by 2029, which will ensure victory in any conflict. The project was actually presented way back in 2017 and dubbed Maven Smart System. But now it has a contractor a little company specializing in military software called Palantir. In theory, the Maven Smart System should optimize decision-making processes during military operations. In practice, the system will be primarily responsible for finding and identifying potential targets. 
To do this, it will collate data from multiple sources, such as satellites, drones, surveillance video systems, and even intercepted data. The prototype should be ready by 2029 and is rumored to be Pentagon's big one. That said, the project is already in the works and it's reported that MAVEN is deployed in various locations around the world controlled by US military as part of other defense projects. The new cash infusion of nearly $500 million only confirms that the Pentagon has definitely not written it off. At the same time, Palantir recently signed a contract with Hyundai Heavy Industries to build an unmanned vessel for reconnaissance operations. Even earlier, the company received $250 million from the Pentagon for research and experiments with AI and machine learning. If anybody out there knows more about this, please let us know in the comments. Meanwhile, engineers at the University of Washington have developed headphones with artificial intelligence that allow you to eavesdrop on an individual in a crowd. All you gotta do is just look at the speaker and the system will recognize the speaker's voice patterns. After that, it will separate his voice from the surrounding noise and feed it into the headphones. The catch? You don't gotta be staring at the target for longer than 3 to 5 seconds. The team tested their device on 21 subjects and on average, the voice of the registered speaker sounded almost twice as clear as the ambient sound. However, so far, the system is not yet tip-top magoo. Firstly, the sound has to go through both earphones, and then the inbuilt AI system can only memorize one voice at a time, but you roughly get the idea of where this is going. As a closer, here's a surprising piece of news. Out of everybody, South Korea all of a sudden decided to become one of the largest space powers within the next 10 years. For this purpose, the country's government has created a space agency and set a goal, an unmanned mission to the moon by 2032 and to Mars by 2035. Looks like Seoul is looking for a place to stash all of that manure from Pyongyang. The country's annual space budget is expected to reach $1.1 billion by 2027, which is kind of peanuts if you look at other space agencies, with additional $1.5 billion going to a new missile program and $2.7 billion for developing navigation satellites. The new space agency, the Korean Airspace Administration, abbreviated CASA, will be modeled after, you got it, NASA. The head of CASA's R&D is none other than John Lee, a 30-year NASA veteran. What do you guys make of this? Let us know in the comments. There's a lot more folks, but we're out of time. So subscribe to the channel, like this video, and check out our Telegram for more news from the world of high tech.